Hello everyone, I'm Jack Fisher and welcome to my world. And in the never-ending pursuit of great comic book gems, there are many paths to pursue. Some go the route of a fun, engaging, action-packed story. Others take a more introspective approach, focusing on character development and the growth that comes with it. Both approaches can work beautifully, but when they're combined in just the right way, they can create a truly special gem of a comic. And that's exactly what Ed Brubaker and Pablo Ramondi did with Fantastic Four, Books of Doom. Now let me get one thing out of the way. If you're a fan of Doctor Doom in any capacity, or if you just like comics that focus on iconic villains, this is the kind of comic you hold in high regard. Because in terms of exploring, fleshing out, and appreciating an iconic villain, Books of Doom checks every box and then some. Now the basis of the book is simple. It seeks to explore the early life of Victor Von Doom, the man who would go on to become Dr. Doom. It's an intriguing premise by default. Dr. Doom is, after all, one of Marvel's greatest villains. And in the pantheon of iconic villains, Dr. Doom often ranks near the top alongside the likes of Darkseid, Lex Luthor, and Darth Vader. Now, there are a lot of things that make him a great villain, plenty of which are fleshed out in this story. But at his core, Victor Von Doom is a smart, capable man who was born into terrible circumstances. You could argue that his circumstances were the worst for someone as gifted and brilliant as him, but that only makes his ascension to becoming such a menacing villain all the more impressive. While Dr. Doom's origins have been explored before, going all the way back to the Stanley Jack Kirby era of Fantastic Four, Books of Doom expands on that story considerably. It keeps many of the basics same, Victor Von Doom is born in the rural backwaters of Latveria in Eastern Europe. His mother is a gypsy obsessed with the occult. His father is a brilliant doctor, but their lives are mired by poverty and persecution. Now the community he grows up in is very loving and close-knit, but they have little to no resources and even less in terms of power and agency. With respect to the greater social hierarchy, Victor Von Doom starts at the very bottom but that is not where he stays. Even before Doom was born, there were signs of his immense capabilities. He proved very smart and aware of his surroundings, so much so that he actually remembers being in his mother's womb. More signs follow as he comes of age. He's able to use what little resources his community has to make incredible inventions. And thanks to his mother and father's influence, he's able to explore both magic and science two fields which he would ultimately master. But before he accomplishes anything of note, he has to face great tragedy, loss, and hardship. We see what happens to Victor when his mother is killed and her soul is taken by Mephisto. We see what happens when Victor's father dies protecting him from the wrath of the Latverian monarchy. And every step of the way, Pablo Ramondi's art renders these awful moments in brilliant yet brutal detail. Through it, we see how these hardships shape Victor. We also get a better understanding of where he comes from and why he is so driven. The world was so harsh and unforgiving to him as a child. So is it really any surprise that he becomes every bit as harsh and unforgiving in return? Now it's not all terrible for him because in addition to all the tragedies that befell Victor, we can also see some of the positive influences in his life. His childhood love interest, Valeria, showed that Victor was capable of love and connection. And later on, his friendship with Reed Richards shows that Victor Von Doom is capable of doing good things. There are even moments in which you feel sorry for Victor. You see it manifest in where he came from and what he's lost. Then you see it in how others tried to exploit his brilliance, treating him as little more than a means to an end. In some respects, it's hard to blame him for becoming so jaded and bitter. Almost everyone he meets treats him like crap, the only constant is the strong denigrating the weak. That never seems to change for Victor. And nobody is even in a position to change it. Not yet, anyways. But on top of those moments of sympathy, Books of Doom also makes clear that Victor is not a pure soul. He shows, at times, that he is also capable of willingly and eagerly doing terrible things. It doesn't happen all at once. He doesn't become this ruthless, cunning supervillain in a single moment. This story simply builds towards that moment, and when it eventually comes, 
It's powerful and cathartic, but not in the classic mold of the hero's journey. More than anything else, Books of Doom inverts that journey. It explores this path that Victor Von Doom took to becoming Dr. Doom. He goes from frail, scared, and vulnerable to callous, cruel, and powerful. It's a hell of a journey, and one that only adds to Doom's mystique. Books of Doom highlight the many phases of that journey. It's not always linear. There are even times when it looks like he might take a different path entirely. But, and this is where the comic really shines, the story makes clear that every path he takes is one of his choosing. Nobody made Victor Von Doom evil and menacing. And nobody makes him continue down this current path he's on. It's clear that at any point, Victor could simply choose to follow the example of Reed Richards. He really could become Earth's most powerful and celebrated superhero. And more than one comic has explored that possibility. But in the end, and this comic makes that clear, Doom simply chooses not to. This is Dr. Doom's will, and that's all there is to it. Call it egotistical, call it villainous, call it whatever you want. It's still Victor's choice. There is no destiny or tragic accident guiding him. This is all on him. By the end, Books of Doom will make you both respect and fear Dr. Doom's story. You'll also have a better understanding of what guides him and why he's so driven. And again, this is not a hero's story. But it's not the story of an outright villain either. It's simply Doom's story and no one else's. It's a story that's compelling to heroes, villains, and comic book fans alike. Now that Doctor Doom is poised to eventually enter the MCU, this is as good a time as any to brush up on all things Doctor Doom. And this book is a great place to start. As always, I'll leave links to both Comixology and Amazon in the description. Thanks for watching, everyone, and thanks for joining me in my world. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Assume that Doom himself wills it. And until next time, take care and stay safe.